photographers. Kim and I have some travel plans, so I asked B&H to send over a few cameras to pick one for our upcoming trips. I'd like it to be small and easy to carry, have a powerful auto mode so I don't have to work too hard, and be high quality for great photos. Well, I'd like a camera with a large sensor, one that has manual controls, and one that saves RAW files and has a good video mode. 4K is preferred. Do looks count? <laughs> of course they do. Will you do the introductions? Certainly. This is the Panasonic GX850. This one is the Olympus Pen 9. And over here we have the Canon M50. Now the Canon's the biggest, the Panasonic's the lightest. I prefer the look of the Olympus. Very old school. Well, I like the Panasonic because it's small and inconspicuous. Um, how about quality? The Canon has an APS-C sensor at 24 megapixels. The others are micro four-thirds at 16 megapixels. Doesn't that make the Canon better? Well, yes, but we're not doing pro work here. These may end up in a blurb photo book, maybe enlarged on a wall. For family travel photos, those are really small differences. And there are photographers who will make a big deal out of one issue or another, but all three of these are very good. They each have the sensor and the megapixel count to deliver high quality results. But you're right, Canon does have the edge here. Lenses. They're also part of the quality equation. I don't imagine these kit lenses are their best glass. Yeah, not typically, but we'll see once we start shooting. Now the Canon's 15 to 45 lens has a switch. You have to slide it to activate it and open the lens. And the Panasonic also has a lock position. I guess that's so they're smaller to carry. It's 12 to 32. And the Olympus, 14 to 42, opens when powered on. Perfect. So these are all medium zooms with a limited range. Let's see how we do with General Brock on his monument here. So here's the GX850 wide and now fully zoomed. And this is the M50 wide and all the way zoomed. Well, finally the Pen 9 wide and zoomed. Well, Panasonic wins here. Not only is it the widest, so you see more of the base and trees surrounding, but its exposure is also the best. It captured the wide dynamic range where the others left the statue kind of dark. Right. Well, now I know I could fix this either in camera with a different exposure setting or in Lightroom, but this is the camera's auto default. And it's the Pen 9 that got the closest, but not by much. Did you also notice that the aspect ratio of the Panasonic and Olympus, the ones with the four thirds sensor, is narrower? Oh yeah, the Canon's APS-C is a wider image. Only the Canon has a viewfinder. I really like that. It also has the best screen articulation. Oh yeah, up, down, and all the way around to face front for selfies, and then it closes into the camera for protection. Well, the Olympus goes up 90, and then down 180 degrees for selfies. That's not quite as flexible. And the Panasonic only swivels up. And for selfies, that's actually slightly better. When the screen is down on the Olympus, you'll have trouble attaching a selfie stick to the tripod mount. Well, let's try the selfies with full auto mode. Gotcha. The Canon's is simple. I like that the shutter button is kind of on the front, and the screen on the side means it's easier to shoot at eye level. Good exposure with the setting sun. The Panasonic selfie mode, which activates automatically when the screen flips up, has a countdown. That could be useful. And this time, I like the Panasonic least. There's an odd flare the rest didn't see. The Pen 9 also has a selfie-specific option screen when it's flipped forward. I think that's my favorite. Let's take landscapes from here with this shot of the beautiful Niagara River, where the Canadian-US border runs right up the middle. I'm switching the Canon to scene mode and selecting landscape. I like the touch feature that works with all the on-screen controls, and then touch to focus and snap. That's sometimes handy. The Olympus has a scenery mode, 
which then has sub-selections for sunset, beach and snow, and panorama, and in people mode, a portrait and landscape. Turn back to me and smile. Also touch to focus and snap. Hmm. On the Panasonic, do I want distinct scenery or bright blue sky? Almost too many options. Touch and snap. I'm going to program mode and use the quick menu to check out the photo styles. Maybe vivid is good for this scene. Oh, good thought. Canon's picture styles are also selected from the quick menu. Landscape looks like a good option, right, and then options to increase the saturation for brighter colors. On the Pen 9, also an interactive menu, there's vivid. I wonder about eye enhance. How do I customize these? On the Panasonic, the photo style settings can be customized in the main menu. Let me try the panorama on the Olympus. On the Panasonic, panorama is a setting on the dial. Oh darn, the M50 doesn't have a panorama setting. Well, that's disappointing. These cameras also have filter effect modes. Panasonic has 22 different selections and settings, most of which have option settings that can be adjusted. With the art setting, the Pen 9 has two sets, one that provides a variety of vignettes, the other a series of filters and effects. The M50's art setting has fewer selections. These HDR modes add a certain je ne sais pas. For flowers with defocused backgrounds, let's try Aperture Priority. The Panasonic's back dial is a little fidgety. It opens f3.5, and when I zoom in, f5.6. The M50 settings dial surrounds the shutter, f3.5 to f6.3. The Pen 9 has a dial on top, also f3.5 and f5.6 when I zoom in. To judge the bouquet, let's zoom for a close-up. The M50 has a nice blur, and while the background blurs nicely on the Panasonic, its closest focus doesn't get too close. The Olympus gets nice and close, and that really makes this violet-colored pansy stand out. Do we really want to shoot manual with these? There are so few dials. Well, it's not ideal, but like manual focus, at least it's an option. All three have burst modes. Canon at 10 frames per second, Olympus at 8. In addition to its standard burst mode at 8 frames, Panasonic also has a 4K burst mode, which takes video at 30 frames per second and can also keep recording for longer than the photo burst mode. In playback, scan through the file to find and save the image you want. The only drawback, the saved image is only 8 megapixels. All three of these cameras have auto ISO, which can be a valuable assist. On the M50, ISO ranges from 100 to 25,600. To my eye, 3200 and even 6400 are usable images. At 12.8, the lines on the house start to break up. At 25.6, it looks like it's raining. Once you figure out your tolerance for a high ISO, configure that setting as the auto ISO maximum. Now the Pen 9 ranges from 200 to 25.6, but there's also a low setting, and that usually means there's some compromise in contrast at that setting. At 3200, the Pen 9 is the cleanest of the three, with good detail in the driveway, but by 6400, the deterioration on the house is evident, and that just gets worse. At 25.6, it's very mushy and full of color noise. Auto ISO has both a default and a maximum setting. The GX850 also ranges from 200 to 25.6, and it also has a compromised low position at 100. In auto ISO, an upper limit can be set. At 3200, the driveway starts to lose definition, but 6400 isn't much worse. The color impurities are evident on the house at 12.8, and 25.6? Not pretty. Uh, the Canon and the Olympus have a mode dial position for video, but all three can record video from any position as long as you press the red button. I like the red button on the Canon the best because it's slightly on the front side of the camera, so when you combine that with the forward-facing screen and a mic input, 
This really is the camera that you want for vlogging. Canon introduces a fairly dramatic crop when you switch to video. Video modes go up to 4K, 24 frames. HD 1080 at 60, 30, and 24, so no slow-mo here. And the video time limit is 30 minutes. The timer counts up. There's a setting to go full manual, and there's a mic import for an external mic. And handheld, even with a full zoom, the M50 is steady, and it smooths out the move as I adjust my position. The Olympus shoots 4K at 30 frames, HD 1080 at 60 and 30. Video time limit is 29 minutes, there's a count up and count down. There's a 720 resolution 120 frame mode for slow motion, no mic input. And here, as on other models, Olympus provides a remarkably steady shot. Even moves are smoothed out, it's actually quite remarkable to watch. My hand is not nearly as solid as this shot makes it look. The GX850 can record 4K at 30 and 24 frames, but only for 5 minutes, count down and count up. HD 1080 at 60, which records for 20 minutes, and 30, which is limited only by available card space. Now, these limits are actually slightly moot, as the GX850 overheats about as quickly as any camera I've ever tested. At the same temperature, the other two had no issues. And there's no mic input jack. Now, stabilization is fine when the lens is wide, but zoomed in, I'm noticing a little jitteriness. These cameras are feature-packed. Lots of cool and quirky tools designed to assist your photo adventures. Although they're fun, I rarely remember to use them, and they're usually more complicated and less valuable than I'd like. I agree. Sometimes I think all I want is the full scene detection auto setting and a manual mode with auto ISO. Now all have smartphone apps to transfer images to your phone for posting to social media, and Bluetooth to maintain the connection for GPS information, particularly useful when traveling. Well, they're all small cameras with small batteries. The Panasonic can be charged using USB, and that's an advantage if you have a USB battery charger. Well, Canon and Olympus provide battery chargers. Canon's, with the plug built in, is smaller and easier to deal with. One less cable to carry around. Olympus is not just big, but you have to pack the power cable. <laughs> Whatever. Just always bring at least one extra battery. And lots of memory cards. We've looked at the photos. Are you ready to make a decision? What's uh, your choice? Uh, well, if you want small light camera in your pocket, it's the GX850, but that video is so limited and made worse by overheating. That's the price of small. Now, it's great for stills with some unique features if you want to take the time to master them, but in spite of a few quirks like the control dial, I really think I have to take the Canon from the swivel screen and the viewfinder to the mic in. It beats the others on so many issues. I'm just not crazy about the lens quality or selection. And it's really a little bigger than I wanted. Yours? Well, my very first good camera was an Olympus. So I'm very drawn to this one. But I'm all about the viewfinder. It's essential when shooting outside. Take the Canon. <laughs> I'm glad we ended up in the same place. All of the photos are posted on Flickr. You'll see high-res versions and the XF data there if you're looking for more detail. And you'll find more detailed reviews of all of these cameras on my channel. Keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. And if you're not tired of clicking, consider subscribing. Now, please keep all of your comments civil and your questions relevant. I will reply to them all. And finally, if you'd like to get a postcard from us during our 2018 travels, send a direct message, email address is below, with your postal address, and we'll send you one. And it's the Canon. It's the Canon.